Hey guys, in this video, we're going to look at the uh, solutions to Algebra 1 EOC Practice 117, starting with problem number one. And problem number one says, for a physics experiment, Dana and Alexis rolled the ball down a ramp and measured the time it took the ball to roll a certain distance. They made a table of values and a scatter plot of the data. Dana added a line of best fit to the scatter plot. The results are shown below. Okay, so here you have a table of values and you have your scatter plot. And I've these are all things that I've made. And here is your graph and the scatter plot and the regression line. And the only thing I don't give you is I don't give you the equation of the regression line. So on the bottom it says, select one of the following lines that is the best approximation for the line of best fit shown in the graph. So I know what it was because I made this and I just had to kind of round the numbers a little bit and hopefully it's gonna match up close to one of these. So how do I actually achieve that? Well, one way I can do it is I can take a look at this point here and this point here, the ends of the regression line. And so if I estimate those two points, this would be about 0.2, because it's this is one and that's two. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, one. So that's gonna be about 0 0.2 comma zero, all right? This point up here is gonna be about, let's see, 1.0, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8. I would say about 1.9 for the T value, comma, 90, 100, 110. Now, what I would do is I would take those two points and I would create a line. So I have 0 0.20, 0. so 0 0.2, comma zero, and I have my second point as 1.9 comma 110. Okay, so let's make the equation of that line. Okay, so here we go. Uh, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, here is, let me label those in a different color. x1, y1, x2, y2 okay so um i also need the slope don't i so i gotta figure i need to really figure out what the slope is um let me figure out what the slope is real quick so the slope because i gotta plug that in right here the slope is going to be 110 minus zero over 1.9 minus 0 0.2 so that's going to give me 110 over 1.7. And so if I take my calculator, 110 divided by 1.7, I get about 64.7 approximately. You can see that. So that's about 64.7. So I'm going to use that for my slope. All right, so I'm going to plug some numbers in. So now I'm going to plug in up here. I'm gonna use X1 and Y1, I might as well, for my X1 and Y1. I could use these if I want to, but I'm just gonna use these because Y1's already zero. So Y1 is zero, X1 is 0 0.2, and my slope turned out to be 64.7. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to plug those three numbers in and then solve for Y. And this is how you find the equation of a line in slope intercept form. So we have y minus 0 equals 64.7 times x minus 0 0.2. Okay, so the y minus 0 is obviously just y. The 64.7, when you distribute it, is going to give you 64.7x minus, and now we have to do 64.7, okay, uh, times 0 0.2 and I get 12.94, and it's gonna be negative. Okay, so I'm looking at 64.7x minus 12.94. So I wanna see which of these equations down here is closest to this one. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite it, the equation I just got up here. So mine, oh, I don't need to be right at the marker like that. I'll bleed through. So mine is going to be y is equal to 64.7x minus 12.94, okay? 
So now, let's take a look and see which of these answers make sense and which ones don't. First of all, I'm just gonna tell you the slope of this line, this regression line is positive. So any line down here that has a negative regression or a negative slope is obviously going to be wrong. So there's no way you should have picked this one. That's negative 80. There's no way you should pick this one. That's negative 60 for a slope. That's not gonna happen. Also, the y-intercept, if it keeps going down like this, just from looking at it, is gonna be negative. So any y-intercept that's positive can be thrown out. So there's no way you should have picked that one, right? Even though the slope looked decent, the y-intercept is completely off, completely wrong. So now we're down to these three, and of these three, I need a 64.7 slope. That's pretty close to 65. Negative 12.94 is pretty close to 14. And so I'm going to choose this one as being my best answer. It's better than this one. The slope is way better. And the y-intercept is better. And this one, the slope is uh, it's okay, but the y-intercept is far off. This one is actually the one that matches up a whole lot better. All right, let's do uh, number two. Number two, you have a system of equations and 3x minus 11y is equal to negative 13, 2x minus 5y is equal to three. I would solve this by elimination. So what I might do is try and eliminate, um, I don't know, we can eliminate the x's. Um, you're gonna have to multiply both equations by something anyway. So why not make your numbers small? So I'm gonna multiply the top one by two and the bottom one by negative three, that way I'll get a six X and a negative six X. All right, so now I'm gonna get six X minus 22 Y equals negative 13 times two is negative 26. Okay, down here, I get a negative six X, positive 15 Y equals negative nine. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna add those two equations together. Okay, the six X's are gonna cancel. Uh, negative 22 and 15 make a negative seven Y equals, and negative 26 minus nine is a negative 35. Divided by negative seven, we have Y is equal to positive five, which is great. So I know my Y value is five. So I've gotta now plug that back into one of my original equations to get the X value. And so I'll plug it into, it doesn't matter, the bottom one, I guess. So I, I could plug it into the top one too if I want. Doesn't matter. Okay, let's plug it into the bottom one. So 2x uh, minus 5 times 5, which would be negative 25. So minus 25 equals 3. All right, so we're going to add 25 to both sides. So 2x is equal to 28, divide by 2, and x is going to be equal to 14. So when you're solving this, obviously when I'm looking at the answers, I want to see work on this. There's no way people are going to look at this and say, oh, well, I know it's 14 and 5. No, that's not going to happen. You're going to need to show your work over here uh, or on a separate sheet of paper or something, and I will never accept an answer <clears throat> for a system of equations like this that does not have any work with it. There's just too many red flags that go up. Uh, number three is uh, average rate of change. It says Amy jogged 600 meters in three minutes, then sprinted 1500 meters in four minutes. What was a Amy's average rate of change over the entire seven minutes in meters per second? So average rate of change, average rate of change, Sometimes people call that speed, velocity, average rate of change is equal to the change in the dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable. So it behaves almost exactly like slope because that's what slope is defined as. So what we need to do is calculate what is the total change in the dependent variable, which is the distance Amy jogged. 1,500 and 600 is a total plus 600. We'll get the total in a second. 
Um, let's talk now about minutes. Uh, four minutes and three minutes, but we want it in meters per second. Okay, critical information. So how many seconds are in three minutes? Uh, 60 times three is 180. And then 60 times four, um, it's gonna be 240. So now we're gonna calculate this. 1500 plus 600 is 2100. 180 plus 240 is going to be 420. And if you actually divide those, 2100 divided by 420, you get five. So in meters per second, that is going to be five. Now, again, on the EOC, you don't have to put five meters per second here because it already tells you what the units are going to be that you're writing. So you don't have to rewrite the units here. Don't write MPS or M, definitely not MPH because it's not miles per hour. Um, you're just going to have to just write the number because they already tell you what the units they want this answer to be in right there. So they don't need you to write it again. All right, so these are all the solutions to Algebra 1 EOC Practice 117. Remember to like my video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.